The King of the Monsters is getting a little hot under the gill. Here's a look at the brand new Hyatt Toys Exquisite Basic Godzilla vs. Kong Heat Ray Godzilla Translucent Version. Legends Collide as Godzilla and Kong, the two most powerful forces of nature, clash on the big screen in a spectacular battle for the ages. As a squadron embarks on a perilous mission into fantastic uncharted terrain, unearthing the clues to the Titan's very origins and mankind's survival, a conspiracy threatens to wipe the creatures both good and bad from the face of the earth forever. While Godzilla is stomping through terrain with slightly translucent scales, what we're going to do is we're going to take the tape measure and we're going to start at the front of its snouts and we're going to work our way at the very back of its tail. If you have it in the configuration as I have it right now, balancing only on the back hind legs, Godzilla manages to pull off a length of about 14 inches, or it's going to be about 36 centimeters long. Again, you don't have to have it the way that I have it right now. If you'd rather just have Godzilla with its tail resting on the ground, you can also do that as well. But what I have, at least based from this, I'm going to take it right to the very top of its spike. And from its height, you're looking at it being about six and a quarter inches of that, or it's about 16 centimeters tall. A kaiju-sized thank you to the folks over at Hyatt Toys that did provide this sample of the brand new Godzilla vs. Kong Heat Ray Godzilla translucent version that we could have a look at this review. While looking at this, you may just assume that the translucency is only really falling on the crest on the top of its spine. As you'll see in a second, it seems to be also utilizing translucency, at least maybe not for his entire body, but at least the top of his torso. Now, this is also using the same body as the original Godzilla vs. Kong Godzilla, which I'm going to bring in right now for a second. There is also a couple of variations of this one. The one that we're bringing in, I think, is the version 2 that had the benefit of the additional hinging of the neck, where the first one didn't have as much posability at play here at the front of his body. The one that at least we get here for the translucent version is luckily at least using the same body. Unfortunately, though, by using translucency and just simply painting it over, I feel like it loses a little something of that darker contrast and colors that the original Godzilla would have possessed. While maybe lacking some of the darker colors, this Godzilla also benefits from having two additional things that the other Godzilla couldn't say that he had. First, the figure comes with an interchangeable head sculpt that consists of two parts. What you have to unfortunately sacrifice is three of the neck collar pieces in favor of this head sculpt. But what this one benefits is, is while not unfortunately having hingeable jaws, it at least gives you the option of having Godzilla shooting his atomic breath up to the sky. To go along with that, of course, talking of atomic breath, the figure also comes included with that. You get a, a sneak peek, first of all, at some of the translucency they're using for the blue plastic. They have frosted very nicely over top of it some white that kind of gives it a little bit more look like water and allows a lot less like fire. But this will fit then into the mouth of Godzilla. I mean, obviously, it's going to make a little more sense what we got on the figure's body, but that just wedges inside its mouth and he can shoot the atomic breath up into the sky. I know that's pretty exciting. We'll get to that more in a moment. First of all, let's pick up the figure here and have a closer look at Godzilla. I did already say that this is using the same body, essentially, and the same mold as the original Godzilla. So if you were a big fan of the first one we got from Hyatt Toys, carries over nicely here with the newer release. This one, while this head sculpt does have at least an open and closed mouth, it gives you at least a chance to see a very nicely sculpted tongue blue inside, top and bottom teeth following the same suit in a nice lighter blue. I do really like the way they've actually colored the areas around the eyes deliberately leaving over the line to give us a nice sort of glowing effect around the eyes. Very nice looking head sculpt. Now, unfortunately, again, while the blue looks really good on this, I feel by painting over the translucency of the plastic, they should have really opted to go with a much darker color than what they did. The lighter gray works okay, but it almost feels in a way like it's missing something more in the paint. It's nicely painted here, the way they've done a lighter coloring of the blue and then the darker blues for all the tops of the spikes. But I feel like if he's projecting some of this atomic breath, some of that blue really shouldn't have maybe settled on some of the plastic in other places than just this area here. They could have colored a little more of a lighter colors around the sections of his spikes. They could have maybe put a little bit of blue there. I think even advertised online when we see images of this guy. Uh, most of the colors, there's a little bit of blue also there. It could have been also just the way they've also uh, lit the character when they were first taking the figure photography, but there seems to be very more apparent areas of blue that doesn't seem to be making its way to the final product. Again, I do really like the way they've done the blue here. Now, I did say that this is using all translucent blue plastic. 
where you kind of get the idea is when you start to take the head off and I'll show you guys more in a moment. But yeah, this is all using translucent blue plastic and boy, have they done a really nice job kind of coloring the middle sections here in a lighter blue. And then again, making the darker translucent. Now, I don't know if they started the coloring at this translucent blue, because again, like when you look at the inside of the neck, you'll see it's maybe not quite this dark blue. So they would have had to go back there and touch that up a little bit with the darker color. It only really looks like the blue, the translucency stops around here. And then the rest of it seems to be just a, a painted in blue tail. But looking at it, you'll actually see there's translucent plastic there as well. So it looks like it's translucent all the way down. Now I did, I did say again, like this one is going to be using translucent pl plastic. I don't know if it's going to be everywhere. Things like his arms, for example, don't really necessarily need to have translucency and they wouldn't have to paint it over top of it, nor for the legs. S sections like his knees, for example, sort of have me questioning whether those are translucent. But again, I just think that that's matte plastic that they end up using. I think if anything, if you can kind of look inside his leg, I don't know if you can, if that's enough just to kind of show you, you can see like the inside of his body, like at least this section right here is all translucent blue plastic. And I know it's probably a little harder to show that exactly. So what I'll do again, if you wanted to have him firing the atomic breath, even though I really like the idea that this one does have an open and closed mouth, what you're going to want to do is you're going to detach this part, this part, this part, and of course his head, just take everything together. You'll get a long post when it's all said and done. We're just going to put the rest of Godzilla decapitate just to the side. I want to show you his head sculpt because again, like if you look at it, this looks like it's just solid, uh, solid gray plastic. And again, they would have only just had to paint in the eyes and the, the inside of his mouth. But if you look at the collars of his neck, look at the inside of this. See how there's a strip of blue plastic right down the middle. Now you may be thinking, well, maybe they only stripped it down the middle. If I just take myself a black light, I'm only using just again, a black light and I'm going to shine this through it. You can see the way that some of the blue is peering its way through the plastic. My guess is they probably would have painted the, the entire thing, except for of course the middle spine. They just would have painted it in gray, which again, makes a lot more sense than them simply just taking a strip of translucent plastic and then gluing it down on the body. It would have never worked for the posability ends of things. So then they would have, again, just painted over the clear plastic or the translucent plastic. So we're going to remove all the three color pieces and we're going to again, remove this head. We're just going to put it to the side. We're going to come back to that. Then we're going to take this neck piece. Now this is, doesn't have any posability. Again, if you look at the inside of it, you can really see where they've actually just painted the gray over top of it, especially right around here. Let's just grab the black light. See right there, as I'm shining the light straight through, you can see the parts that where the paint even hasn't even made its way on there. There's a little bit of that clear plastic shining through. Okay. So we're going to take this part of the neck and we're going to fit it over top of the dowel. Now you're, you're looking at that and think there's no way really that that head's going to be able to attach onto the ball joint. It does by the benefit of the fact that the inside of the, see how it actually sticks a little higher up and it's not completely inset. So what we're going to do, just plug it onto the end of the ball joint. Now you do have a Godzilla, unfortunately, that has to now forfeit some articulation. He still has it here, but he doesn't have it to the level of what he had before, even though really all of these never really had their own dedicated ball joints anyways. They were literally just collar pieces that went over top of a post. But this unfortunately now gives us a very more stable figure that's not going to be able to move as much. Now, what you can do is just if you have them upright like this, and you even want to have to bring his, his body just a little bit higher than this. There we go. You really want to make sure, I will say, that you got the head completely attached onto the ball joint. Because when you take yourself, the, the atomic breath, see how there's an angle like this on the, on the very end. This has to fit inside his mouth. And they probably did this also as well, because if they had made this just a straight plastic, he'd be shooting it this way. But by angling it, it also cheats a little bit and allows it to go a little higher up. So that's just going to slide on the end of his mouth like this. And now Godzilla can fire his breath. I wouldn't say 100% vertically. It comes pretty close. Now, again, you can kind of just bring the legs just a little higher up as best as you can get it. It does an okay enough job of getting it almost completely straight up. Again, that's a great way of displaying the figure. I think with the fact that I already have now a couple of Godzillas from Hyatt Toys and the, the, the fact that the other ones are better paint feel, I feel at least there are better painted figures. I think I'm probably just going to have this guy displayed on my shelf, firing the atomic breath. The fact that they would take the time to include that and also paint as nicely as they did for all the spines that he has on, on the back of his body. I'm probably just going to end up displaying the figure like this. Cause I, I admit, you know, that does look pretty cool when you're having Godzilla on your shelf looking like this. Now, for the purpose of posability, of course, let's just take the fiery breath out of his mouth. Well, also as well, and one thing I did also want to say too, is you want to really make sure the head is firmly attached on here. There's been a couple of times where the head wasn't completely securely attached to that ball joint, that when I put this in, just the weight of this alone, 
popped this head completely off the ball point ball joint so you just want to make sure that's completely on there but we're going to just attach it right now we're going to go back and bring back in the three bears we've got papa bear mama bear and baby bear the little neck coils we're going to put on first papa bear then we're going to put the next size up there's mama spike and then of course we're going to put the baby spike on last and then from there, we're going to go and put back in. Now, you, you may also be asking yourself, could you also use this head sculpt with this configuration of the neck? You can, but the way that the head is actually designed, what it ends up doing, though, is it's going to have the, the neck or the head facing this way. You can't have it looking up. I mean, that's fine. If you wanted to have the figure display that way, you can also go that route as well. It is essentially using the same universally sized pickles. It has to be. Of course, it has to be able to swap out those heads. But just for the purpose of this, let's go back to the head that we started things off. And that's just going to plug back in place. There we go. Now looking at the posability for this new Godzilla. So if you already have the original one, it's going to basically follow the same format. Because again, these are all sitting essentially attached onto one long post. You get the ball joint benefit here on the end of his, for his head. So that's going to move up and down, back and forth. Of course, it, this now benefits from having a hingeable mouth so it can open and close. And of course, you can also rotate it and all the fun stuff goes with it. But then all of these, even though the, you really are looking at these and just assume that they're all ball joints, it's sort of, again, kind of cheating because they're basically just sitting against a post. And they're all basically moving on their own, but they're really not. They're all just kind of moving and shifting around against that pole. The back of the body, or I guess like the midsection of his body does rotate, but it only rotates just a little bit. It'd be one of those cases, if you were to blink, you probably would just completely miss it and think, oh, did I just, did I just miss the part that he was moving the torso? No, you didn't. That's, that's to the extent of what it can actually do. Not really much at all. His arms at least move a little bit more, uh, not to the point where he can actually give a big giant hug to King Kong, but at least you can bring the arms out just only by a little bit. You can take them and at least rotate them all the way around. There's a hinge in his elbow. You can also rotate the forearm, you can rotate the hand, and you can hinge the hand back and forth. For his legs, they move out a little bit better than what the arms do, but only by just this far. And then, of course, you can take the legs and move forward. You can move them back. All the same articulation as the original Godzilla. He has a hinge joint here and a hinge joint here. So between those two, you can get a nice walking stance for Godzilla. And, of course, when it comes to his ankle, his ankle's on a ball joint, so you can move them back and forth and up and down, and all that fun stuff that goes along with it. And then for his tail. Okay, so his tail has a ball joint, a ball joint. Not just me repeating ball joints again. He has one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and then one on the end. So that's what, like five? You can also move that very, very good range, actually being able to move it back and forth. So again, if you wanted to have this guy in an upright position, which I might just end up doing considering he does have the atomic breath, I'm going to go that route. But again, if you wanted to have him on just his twos, granted, it's going to be a little bit more of a balancing issue, but it is possible. It's one of the things I really liked about the high toys. I mean, Godzilla is a hard character to get him to stand on his, on his two hind legs, but it is something that you can pull off. Now, the, again, the only thing about this is just moving this guy back just a little bit. Let's bring in back the original Godzilla. I guess if you have the original Godzilla, it's, it's not a bad thing to, at all that they just painted it a little bit lighter. It makes him a little bit more different than the original Godzilla. But I got to think, like, if I get this guy to stand, I have to wonder if they had simply just taken the color scheme now, I know this is, they're using here at least translucent blue plastic. I know I've completely blocked him off by the original Godzilla. But if they had only just painted him, I don't expect him necessarily to have the layers of coloring that, like this guy's got a little bit of a lighter color added in there as well, for the most part, really. This guy's painted a really nice dark gray. I feel like for them even still using translucent blue plastic, I'm not... I'm not against the idea that they used translucent plastic for what I'm guessing to be the neck collar piece to like maybe the end of the tail, basically for whatever is covering off the spikes. So where the spikes start to where the spikes end had to have been probably translucent plastic from, from front to back. I don't mind that they did that, but I think that they should have just at least added a darker coloring to it from the standpoint, at least of it being a different looking Godzilla cosmetically, it does definitely look more different than a lighter color version of the original Godzilla God, Godzilla that we did get from before. But I don't know. I think I, I still would have liked the darker colors still bring in the translucency by all means, still bring in the nicely colored spikes that they've done in the blue, the lighter and the darker blue. That looks fantastic. But I feel like maybe it comes at the price that they colored the, the character. They made Godzilla a little too light of a gray. Had they only made him just a darker gray, 
this guy would have been a home run hit. While maybe I do miss some of that dark gray paint that was on the original Godzilla, I will at least commend the folks over at Hyatt Toys for actually taking a clear translucent blue plastic body and painting the parts that aren't spikes in light gray. I mean, anything that has a spike sticking out of it. I even thought at the end of his tail they probably cheated a little bit and just painted that in blue, but it doesn't seem to be the case. They, lo they literally use translucent blue plastic from the end of the collar that attaches onto the head to the very end of his tail. Now, all the parts that obviously don't have to have spikes, like the head, for example, the arms, and even the legs, those all seem to be just using regular matte plastic. I think they've done a nice enough job of actually matching the colors so that you can't really tell what exactly is translucent blue plastic and what actually isn't gray plastic. And while I do like the look of the blue, the atomic breath that he has blasting out the front of his mouth is really a nice touch. And one way I'm going to be displaying the figure on the shelf, I got to admit, like the spikes sticking out of his body, going the, light, the lighter route of the blue and then adding the darker blue on the end of it. Boy, those things just glow. But I feel like going back to the coloring of the paint, even though it is a lighter gray paint and I prefer the darker myself, I feel like there still could have been an opportunity for highest talented artists not to go in there and paint some darker contrasting colors. I think my big thing is, is the fact that the figure has too much light gray. There needed to be, light gray is fine. I think there just needed to be some darker grays added in there. And hey, considering that his spikes are glowing and all, why not they could have done something similar to what they did with the eyes? Sort of have some of the parts to his skin closer to those spikes painted a little bit in that blue. Not to the point where it just looks like they literally slapped on some blue paint, but just enough to give you those little nuances where the colors of the lighter on the spikes, some of the light of the spikes are casting onto his body, and then like his underbelly would have been a little bit slightly darker. That's all basically I would have wanted on this figure. But from a, from a standing this guy on the shelf with the atomic breath blasting out the front of his mouth boy this guy looks fantastic again just using using the original godzilla we got from before if you like the darker godzilla obviously go the route of the ones that we already got from hyatt toys what the version one and the version two with the additional adjustable neck but if you like the idea of having the blasted atomic breath this one's a great one to pick up big thank you once again to the folks over at high toys that did provide the sample of the godzilla versus kong heat ray godzilla translucent version we had the chance to have a look in this review is this one that you guys could see yourselves picking up or do you have the original godzilla and you're just happy to stick with that one let me know what you guys think of the figure down below in the comment section uh, certainly as well if you guys did enjoy this video i want to throw it a like if you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and would like to stick around for more Definitely make sure if you haven't already done so that you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on the bell notification. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.